Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to do another rifle cartridge review on the 50 BMG. Stay tuned. The 50 BMG started development in 1917, and it was released in 1921. Did not quite make it to the tail end of World War I, however, the rifle and the cartridge have been in use from World War II on to this very day. BMG, what does that stand for? It stands for Browning Machine Gun. So to talk about the 50 BMG first, we have to talk about its developer and designer, John Browning. John Browning is a fascinating guy. He of course is well known for creating several rifles, shotguns, and pistols that we either still use today or very similar to his designs are still being used. He famously designed and built the prototypes of several historic lever action rifles for Winchester, like the 1892 and the 1894. Also, he built the 1911 Colt pistol, which is still extremely popular today. He mainly worked for Winchester, Colt, and FN over in Belgium. And like I said, he mainly created rifles, shotguns, and handguns. However, there was another category that he loved to work on, and that was machine guns. He actually started working on his first machine guns back in the 1890s. And he would have various types of machine guns used in World War I and World War II. Well, in 1917, he took an existing machine gun that he created, and he wanted to just expand it. And with the help of Winchester and a few other little companies, he designed a new cartridge, the 50 BMG, basically taking a 30-06 and making it much, much bigger. And then he created the M2 heavy machine gun. And just to explain to you how big that this cartridge is, when you think of a 30-06 or a seven rim mag or a 300 Winchester mag or a 28 NOS or anything like that, it's gonna be a standard or long action which is gonna have a max cartridge overall length of about 3.34 inches. And anything beyond that is gonna be a magnum length action. So your H&H &H actions, your Jeffrey actions, and then of course all your Weatherby's, um, your 300 Weatherby, which came from the H&H, &H, and then your 378 Weatherby cartridges that come originally from the 416 Rigby. Those are gonna to top out at around 3.6, 3.7 inches because they have to fit in that magnum length action. The case itself is 3.9 inches, just the case. And the overall cartridge length on the 50 BMG is 5.450. So you get your biggest 460 Weatherby out there. It's like a child next to this 50 BMG. If you open up the Hornady reloading manual, they really only have one bullet for the 50 BMG. It's a 750 grain AMAX. 750 grain bullet and it's going around 2800 feet per second with a ballistic coefficient of 1.050 it's over one <laughs> so we talk about ballistic coefficients that are really high usually it's over 600 extremely high maybe around 700 this is over one <laughs> so we're over a thousand basically incredible and it was meant to shoot out of a machine gun <laughs> That's insane. <clears throat> it's also, you can buy a civilian rifle today and shoot these out of your own personal, probably 30 pound, if not much more rifle. And therefore that's why it's part of this list. I mean, there's obviously bigger munitions and bigger cartridges out there for tanks and things, but as far as something you can actually personally shoot out of a rifle and it's seen all the other uses as well, nothing compares. So if memory serves me correct, the current world record sniper kill was back in 2017 and it was 2.4 miles with the 50 BMG. Even though the 338 Lapua was made more specifically for people and it did have the world record, I believe in 2017, the BMG re regained that world record at 2.4 miles, it took out a terrorist. But the 50 BMG was never really designed for people or obviously any kind of hunting. It was designed for 
anti-vehicles, anti-aircraft, anti-tank. It's been mounted on a tripod, obviously. It's been mounted on vehicles, on tanks, on ships, on aircraft. And it's literally meant to take down other vehicle, ships, aircraft. It's usually always found in its machine gun form unless it's mounted to a, bi or a tripod and on the ground at that point it does have the ability to shoot semi-automatic. Once again, you can buy a bolt action rifle for yourself as well. This is a cut around that'll take out an engine block and totally disable a vehicle. It'll take out an outboard motor and totally disable a boat. And you know, planes have them on there, have dual 50 caliber machine guns taken in other planes. It's just a beast. And since it's a military cartridge, there's so many different bullets you can get, like incendiary rounds, tracers, slap rounds, anti-armor or armor piercing, so much versatility. I think I'm correct in saying this, but I believe the original M2 machine gun on a tripod, the gun was around 84 pounds, not to mention the tripod itself was around 30 or 40 pounds. This was never designed for a lightweight rifle for obvious reasons because of the extreme recoil. And once again, if it's a machine gun, it's mounted to some kind of vehicle or aircraft or ship. With a 750 grain bullet going around 2,800 feet per second with a BC of 1,050, your energy at the muzzle is gonna be around 12,800 foot-pounds of energy. At 600 yards, you're still gonna have about 8,700 pounds or foot-pounds of energy. I'm gonna show you how it compares to a few of the cartridges that I have here sitting here. 22 long rifle, much bigger 204 Ruger, much bigger 22-250, followed by 243 and 308. And then your 6.5-284, 270 short mag, 30-06, and then, oh, what do you know? Wow, holy cow. So as you can see, it's the king. It's the absolute beast of rifle cartridges. It's amazing. This was designed over 102 years ago, or de uh, released over 102 years ago, designed about 105 years ago, in between, right at the tail end of World War I, before, long before World War II, and it's still the Mac Daddy. <laughs> the other amazing thing is, that, uh, is John Browning. You know, he's developing the Colt 1911. He had developed you know, the 1892 and 1894 and, and 1886 and 1895, so many awesome Winchester lever rifles, the Browning Auto 5 shotgun, so many cool rifle shotguns and handguns he developed. And it's almost like, I don't know if you call this his spare time. <laughs> it's not because it was all his profession. And he did it with Winchester and Colt and these different companies. But it's just like, it's a whole other part of his life. And in all honesty, this, I think it's the crown jewel of everything he designed, that M2 rifle and that, and that whole system. And then that, and this 50 BMG, in my opinion, for back in 1917 is the magnum opus of John Browning's designs. It's incredible. Now, I, I, I will say this, the original M2 was water-cooled. And in the 30s, after John Browning had died, they did make a few tweaks and made an air-cooled version. And that version is the main one still used today in our military. But it's still used today. It's basically the same thing, just a few minor tweaks in 2023. And in fact, it's used by many countries throughout the world, or at least a copy of it. So kudos to the 50 BMG, kudos to John Browning, an amazing, amazing rifle cartridge. Hope you've enjoyed this. Check out the description below. There is a link to Patreon. I'm not expecting you to support me, but if you want to support the channel, there's a link there. There's a link to my Instagram, my Twitter, and also to my website. And so check those things out if you're so inclined. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, have a great day and take care.